All right, you guys, so today we are going to get a look at the Vintage Collection Tentative 4 Corridor Diorama playset, guys. So really, really cool playset. This was announced a few months ago, uh, about six, seven months ago. Uh, when I saw it, I was very, very excited. As you can see, we have a very cool illustration on the front of the box with Vader entering uh, the ship as he does in A New Hope. Uh, we have our Star Wars banner that goes around the edge of the box as well. Uh, over here in the corner, we have our Rebel Fleet Trooper on the Vintage Collection card back. Each set comes with one of these figures, so that is very, very cool. I actually have two of these sets, and I have another two sets coming from Hasbro Pulse. Uh, these first two sets shipped out from GameStop here in the United States early last week, and I received it on Saturday uh, of last week. Uh, again, with the box, we have our attention information at the bottom. Disney, Hasbro logo, very, very cool stuff, guys. Let's get a look at the side of the box. Now, on the side of the box, as you can see, uh, we have an illustration that demonstrates that the doors do slide open back and forth, which is really, really cool. And then, of course, we have Darth Vader and his uh, stormtroopers there. In the picture, our Star Wars logo, Tentative 4, Corridor, very awesome stuff. And then on the back side of the box, which is basically the same as the front, uh, we have all of the same information on the back side of the box there, guys. On the top of the box, we have a depiction of the corridors kind of fitted in different configurations to illustrate the different ways that you can use these. And that's why I actually purchased four of these because I would want to uh, do different configurations such as this. Now, of course, each of these sets are about $49.99 US retail. But again, you can create a very, very cool diorama setting with additional sets added to your original set. So uh, here on the back side of each one of our sets here, you have the corridor where R2-D2 and Princess Leia exchange the Death Star plans in A New Hope. Now, of course, you would need two sets to complete that portion of the diorama. Uh, but again, you do have that there, which is really, really awesome stuff there, guys. Very cool. And then on the underside of the box, again, you have a second door that slides back and forth or slides open there. So you have two doors, the one at the front of the set and then one off to the back side of the set that slides open. So uh, very cool additional pieces there for this particular so guys, set. We're gonna get both of these sets open here and we're gonna put them together and get a look at both sets together and all of the details and all of the features. And then of course, once we've done that, we will get a very cool diorama setting with the two sets together. So guys, stay tuned for that. So getting you guys a look at the contents as they appear inside of the box. Uh, we have our panels here for the corridor. Uh, we also have the back panels, uh, the backside panels there, which are tied down uh, to the backside of the front of the box. And then we have our carded figure sitting at the uh, top of everything and very nicely placed, I should add, uh, in some of the recent sets of the uh, Vintage Collection, uh, the cards were placed in areas where they were uh, either bent or damaged slightly uh, in some sort of way. Uh, it looks like here uh, they may have uh, registered some of those complaints and uh, went ahead and placed the card uh, in a position that uh, would keep it from being damaged, which is uh, very cool and very much appreciated. Uh, from Hasbro. So thank you Hasbro for doing so that. Once we remove the corridor walls, behind that we have the two opening doors in the box which is really cool. 
And then just behind that, we have the floor panels for our corridor. And those are the contents as they appear in the so box. So getting you a look at the figure that comes with your set again, each set comes with your Rebel Fleet Trooper in the vintage carded line, which is absolutely cool. You have your figure in the bubble, as well as the uh, card back depiction of the Fleet Trooper. This is uh, definitely from Rogue One, from the Darth Vader scene, which is absolutely cool. And then you have your Star Wars banner that wraps around the depiction, Rogue One, your Kenner logo towards the bottom there, your warning label, and your four and up. Very, very cool stuff. And then your figure comes with quite a few accessories. Uh, it looks like you may even be able to switch out the helmet there for a, a ball cap. I'm not sure exactly what that other accessory is, but we will get a look at that most definitely. And then on the back side of your card, you have the other figures that come in the way. Uh, very, very cool stuff. And that's what the back side of your card looks like. And of course you have your Star Wars banner that wraps around the uh, depiction of those figures. Uh, this is going to be your Vintage Collection 183. We have our Vintage Collection logo and all of our warning and readables towards the bottom of the card. So guys, what do you say we get a look at the uh, figure? We're gonna go ahead and pull him out of his bubble and uh, we're going to also get a look at the articulation, all of the accessories that come with the figure. And then also we will uh, go ahead and put our tentative four corridor set together and get that diorama. All right, you guys. So we have our figure out of the box and first impressions, he is really, really cool out of the box, guys. He comes with several different accessories. You have uh, what I thought was a ball cap uh, there in the packaging. Uh, you also have his uh, pistol, his, his um, blaster. Uh, you also have what I'm assuming is a scanner uh, of some type. I'm not sure what the function is of that particular accessory there. And then you also have a, a bandolier uh, that may have uh, grenades or something of that nature, some kind of weapon there, uh, which kind of uh, wraps around uh, the arm, I believe, uh, or perhaps you can wrap it around the ankle, whichever is your preference. Uh, I chose to put it around the arm, but you guys let me know down in the comments where uh, you think those, uh, where you think that particular uh, band of weapons should go on the arm or somewhere on the ankle, uh, you let me know. But very, very cool looking figure. Uh, I think he's absolutely awesome. And we're actually gonna get a comparison of this figure and the several different Power of the Force Rebel Troopers that I have, and we will be using those for the diorama here today. But I wanted to uh, get a quick comparison between the new vintage collection version of the Rebel Trooper. And then of course, uh, we'll get a look at the old school Power of the Force version of the Rebel Trooper guy. So uh, again, let's get you guys a closer look at this figure. So getting you a close up look at our Rebel Trooper. He's a very awesome looking figure. And of course we've seen this figure before, obviously in the six inch line, as well as the uh, as I had mentioned, Power of the Force line. As you can see, he has a very, very, a very, very cool detailed face sculpt, which is really awesome. And then you have, again, all of his accessories. Again, I believe that is a scanner of some type in his hand there. Uh, but again, guys, let me know what you think, what that particular device is. And of course, again, here is that bandolier with the uh, grenades in it. Uh, again, I believe it would go around the shoulder, but uh, let me know if you believe it would go around the ankle. I think I have seen that around the ankle, uh, sp specifically on the pilots. So uh, very cool. And then you have the helmet as well. And the helmet is removable. Let's get that chin strap under his chin. And we take the helmet off. So when we get the helmet off, this is what your Rebel Trooper looks like, which is really awesome. And then of course you can switch out the helmet for the ball cap. 
and uh, give him a different look. So he's definitely made for army building. So I cannot wait until we get the single release of this particular figure so I can army build this guy. I think that's gonna be really, really awesome. Real, real nice. So for your articulation, your Rebel Trooper is gonna give you a straight arm like so. It's gonna give you an elbow bend. It's gonna give you an elbow bend that only goes back about that far. Your Rebel Trooper is gonna give you a T-pose like so, so that is very awesome. Your twist is gonna be in the elbow. There's also a twist in the wrist as well. There is no hinge in the wrist to give it flexibility to go back and forth. In the leg area, he's gonna give you a straight out kick like so, really good. He's gonna give you a knee high that's about that high. He only goes back about that far. Um, there is no joint at the hip to allow him to kick out. Um, so this is gonna be his widest stance. It's giving you that old five POA uh, hip action there. Uh, so there is no side kick or side out uh, for the leg area. You have a twist at the knee. You also have a twist in the ankle. So there is a twist in the ankle. The ankle will go down like so. So that's cool. Uh, it goes up, not really that far. That's as far as the ankle goes up. Uh, there is no joint, obviously, in the ab area. It's all in the head. In the head area, he's gonna look down that far, up about that far. You have your left to right action, uh, and a little bit of head knot there. So really, really cool stuff with your Rebel Trooper Vintage Collection three and a quarter scale figure. Very, very awesome. So a quick look at the accessories. You have the helmet and ball cap as options for your figure, so that's really, really cool. You have here what I believe to be some kind of radar gun or detection gun. Uh, I'm not, uh, again, not 100% sure what exactly this is. Uh, I know I've seen it before, I just don't know exactly what the function is, but very, very cool. Uh, no uh, outstanding paint apps, just a simple black on this particular accessory. And then for your blaster, you have your blaster here for your trooper. Uh, standard weapon for your rebel trooper. Uh, does come with a little bit more paint apps. You have a silver at the uh, tip of the blaster. Uh, and then of course the rest of the blaster uh, is covered in a black. Uh, but there is some uh, significant details in there. You have the screwed looking thing there in the, in the uh, handle. Really, really nice, very, very cool weapon for your Rebel Trooper. Last but not least, we have the bandolier with uh, what I believe is to be grenades in there. Very cool stuff. So here you have a comparison between your Power of the Force Rebel Trooper and your Vintage Collection Rebel Trooper. Now, obviously you can see the clear differences uh, uh, specifically with the colors. Uh, the color scheme for your power of the force you have the beige pants uh with a sort of a bluish green shirt you might say almost gray uh, in color uh and then you have the helmet which is not quite in white uh, it is kind of off white uh with the painted image of the visor uh there uh and then with your vintage collection uh, you clearly have a totally different color of pants, almost matching the uh, shirt of the Power of the, For Power of the Force version of the figure. Uh, and then you have the blue shirt uh, versus that uh, blue-green color for the Power of the Force. And then, of course, you have the uh, very clear white helmet uh, for your vintage collection figure that also includes the uh, antenna there uh, at the top. Uh, there you have a look at your two different versions of the Rebel Trooper guys. Very, so very I cool. wanted to get you a look at the instructions for the construction of the corridor. You have the uh, walls there that would connect there in your first panel. In the second panel, you would connect uh, the front door to the wall uh, then you would also connect the, uh, that center piece there uh, to the 
uh, one of the doors there in your third panel. In the fourth panel, you would connect the second door to the uh, other side of the wall. In the fifth panel, you would construct your flooring for the corridor. In the sixth panel, you would apply the floor to the corridor. And then finally, in the seventh panel, you would apply the, the uh, pieces to the back side uh, of your playset there. And uh, that is the uh, full instructions uh, to the construction build of your uh, corridor there. And we're gonna get this thing built and uh, get a look at it, guys. So uh, stay All tuned. All right, guys. So with the construction of the uh, corridor here, we've attached our door here to the one side of the corridor walls here. The, you have these knobs here, right there, that attach to the corridor wall. Uh, they also attach to this piece here. You have the holes on the side there. And then on the back side, you have a couple of holes there. So it gives you some options on how you can configure the wall. Um, so you really will have an opportunity to use your imagination uh, if you get a few sets of these, like I am. Like I said, I have two additional walls coming uh, to pair up with the two that I already have. So I'll be able to do some really cool configurations with this thing. So as you guys can see, I have the wall constructed here and hopefully it's fully in the frame there. I'm not sure if it's catching everything in the frame, but I have the wall partially constructed, I should say, uh, there. But for this piece, uh, we're gonna need to sit that piece right there so we can have the door facing towards us so in order to do that, this piece was originally attached to the end of the corridor wall. I had to remove it from the wall from those three pegs that were sitting on the edge of the wall there. And the reason for that is because I'm going to attach it, the uh, side piece to the, the door, to the pegs that are on the side there. And I believe I have them lined up pretty good, if I'm not mistaken. And you kind of squeeze them together to get them on there. So now it is on the wall. And now I'm gonna attach the door using these holes here to attach to those pegs on the end of the corridor. And once I have everything lined up, I'm gonna attach this to the So wall. I've gone ahead and attached our second door there using that small side panel piece so it's now connected to the door, which is now connected to the corridor wall, which is now connected to the door towards the front of the corridor. So now we need to get our flooring put together. Your flooring consists of two different pieces here. And everything connects very simply, almost like Lego. So for this configuration that we have here, we're gonna put the two pieces together and they actually kind of slide into each other. Like so, you line up the uh, holes at the bottom and slide them together. And now we have them together. And just to get you a look on the backside of what it looks like. So they kind of interconnect like that. And the floor gives you several different options. Um, you have other slots here there's some larger slots here. Well, the larger slots actually fit the, the sides of the corridor. So this is what you would use to slide into the corridor portion of it. So again, our flooring is gonna go this way. So let's go ahead and connect that flooring. So now we have our flooring in place with our corridor. So for the back side of the corridor walls, you also have the additional diorama set where Princess Leia gives R2-D2 the Death Star plans. However, to set that up, you will need to add these additional pieces, which are the walls for the back side of the corridor. And you have four of those pieces there, as you can see. So let's go ahead and, and apply those pieces. So you simply 
connect those pieces to the four extensions there on the wall. And it kind of gives you a little clicking noise to let you know that they've been placed on there properly. You want to have the curve end of this piece towards the top. Again, you get that clicking noise to let you know that it's been properly placed. And then let's get our final piece on there. So now we have all four of our pieces in place. And now we have a partial setup of that hallway scene. Now this is where your second set is going to come into play for you, uh, specifically for the back side of this playset. But here we have the front side of the playset. So very, very cool stuff. Let's get a look at some of the very few functions for this particular set. So as I stated before, you have the functioning doors here to allow you to open and close those doors. It's the same with the front side there. So that's very, very cool. So we're gonna go ahead and get the second set constructed so you guys can get a look at what these two sets together would look like. So now, as you can see with both sets completed, I have the back side of the corridor scene available with both sets put back to back together, which is really, really cool and very awesome. And that's why it would be well worth if you are interested in having both different scenes for your dioramas, uh, it would be worth getting both sets or two sets of these. Again, they are fairly expensive, about $49.99 US dollars. Uh, but again, if it's worth it to you, you will have a very cool diorama set, two different scenes in which to create very cool dioramas in the Tanative 4. So very, very cool stuff. And I do think that this is a very, very cool set. And even if you only have one of these, it still makes for a great display piece on your shelf. So again, depending on what your needs are or what your desires are in regards to what style of diorama you would like to present with these two different pieces, you can configure these pieces in any which way you desire. So let's say if you were going for a long hallway scene, you could put the two pieces together like I have here in a long one single file aisle. And as you can see, there's a, just gives it a long runway. And you have several door options as well. And the uh, corner pieces are basically meant to go together. So if you wanted to do it that way, you can. And then you have this option as well. It opens everything up. And you have a very, very cool scene there. It's very, very awesome. All right, you guys. So now we are going to get into the diorama portion of our review. Let's go ahead and get into this diorama, guys.
diorama piece from the Vintage Collection. Very cool piece. I absolutely love it. There is so many things that you can do with this. There are several different configurations that you can complete with this set, especially if you have multiple sets. I had two sets here and I was able to put together at least three to four different configurations, probably more if I was really, really thinking about it and concentrating on that. I am waiting on two additional sets to go with the two that I already have, which will give me even more variety in regards to the configurations that I can create with this particular set. So I think this is an excellent, excellent set. It is at a price point of $49.99, which can be a bit pricey, especially since you may want to get multiple sets but I do feel that it is worth it um, to get at least two of these, uh, which would be about $100. And then of course, if you decide to get three or four, uh, that would be up to your discretion, but obviously it would give you a variety of configurations to complete with this particular diorama set. So uh, I think it is a very, very cool and excellent set, and it would be nice for Hasbro to continue to give us sets like this. Uh, this is absolutely cool and probably one of the best items that I've received uh, this year uh, out of the full line of Hasbro Star Wars collectibles. So uh, very, very cool stuff. My only complaint or very minor gripe, I should say, with this particular set is just like the Cloud City freezing chamber set that we got a few months ago. That set should have come with some type of pegs to uh, place, to put in place so you can have your figures standing. Sometimes with the three and a quarter size figures, it's very difficult to get them to stand, especially for long periods of time. And then of course, if you don't have all vintage collection figures, and you have to deal with the five POA figures or the power of the force figures, uh, those figures are very, very hard to stand. And it would just be nice to have some pegs to have in place so you can have those figures standing. But again, that is just a minor nitpick of mine. But guys, let me know what you think of this set. Were you able to pick up this set? Um, I'm not sure what retailers are releasing this set at the moment. Of course, this particular set came from GameStop. I am again waiting for two additionals from Hasbro Pulse. I uh, have not got a shipping notification on those items as of yet, but I do expect to get that shortly. So guys, let me know what your thoughts are. Have you picked up this item? Do you expect to pick up this item? Let me know and put those comments down below. Please like and subscribe and of course guys from the father to the daughter to the ob1 force ghost may the force be with you always